This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Neat Sahone, and today is Friday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. In the last two MTG Top 10s, I looked at the worst and best life gain cards in the game, so I thought it would also be interesting to continue with the life gain theme today with a look at life gain payoffs. To be eligible for this list, a card had to give you some sort of bonus for gaining life. This includes cards that trigger when you gain life, cards that trigger if you have gained life during your turn, and cards that give you a bonus for exceeding your starting life total. Before we get started, I want to tell you about this video's special sponsor, Into the AM. They're an apparel company that makes great graphic t-shirts like the one I'm wearing now. This shirt is called Spirit Blossom, and it features some really great art of a cherry tree in full bloom. Between the color and the subject matter, it really reminds me of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. If you like this shirt or want to check out their other products, you can use the link in the description, which will also give you 10% off your purchase. Now, the last thing before we get to the list, and that's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top eight is worth two points. This includes events like World Championships and Pro Tours. And a second tier top eight is worth one point, and this includes events like Grand Prix and Magic Online Challenges. All right, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Drogskull Reaver. This big, scary spirit costs 7 mana and only gives you a 3-5, but then the text box is filled with some pretty sweet stuff. For one thing, it comes with Flying, Double Strike, and Lifelink, a trio of keyword abilities that go really well together. It's hard to block because of Flying, it hits hard when it isn't blocked thanks to Double Strike, and because it creates a 12-point life swing when it hits your opponent, it can really put the game out of reach in a hurry. The part that gets the Reaver on this list is the fact that you get to draw a card whenever you gain life. Drawing cards is always powerful, and one nice thing here is that because the Reaver comes with both lifelink and double strike, it does an effective job of triggering its payoff ability all on its own. If it gets both hits in, you get to draw two cards on top of doing a bunch of damage and gaining a bunch of life. In Standard, it appeared in some Esper Control decks as a win condition, and in Modern, it was played in Soul Flare decks, which love creatures with a bunch of keywords, so the Reaver was a great fit there. Soul Flare decks haven't been a thing in Modern for a while, though, and it has no points since 2020, so it will probably get knocked off this list in the future. At number 9, it is a Johnny's Pride Mate. This is one of the most well-known life gain payoffs there is, and that's partly because it's been reprinted several times and is at a lower rarity, so you even see it in Limited a lot. The Pride Mate starts out as a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, but it gains a plus one plus one counter any time you gain life. In the right deck, the Pride Mate can get quite large in a hurry. It didn't actually gain any standard points as a result of its printings in Magic 2011 or 2015, but it did finally gain some points in standard after the Core Set 2019 reprint. In that format, it was played in Boros and Orzhov aggro decks, which obviously also had several ways to gain life. It also has a single modern point coming in Soul Sisters, a deck that runs several effects that gain you one life when a creature enters the battlefield, and each instance of that effect would grow your pride mate. It doesn't have any points since 2020, though. At number 8, it is Resplendent Angel. This angel starts with nice stats as a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three flyer, and it, of course, has a life gain payoff ability. If you gain 5 or more life in your turn, the angel cranks out a 4-4 four, four angel during your end step. It also has an activated ability that allows the angel to gain plus 2, plus 2 in lifelink, and if it's allowed to do combat damage that turn and survive, it will trigger its own ability during your end step. While in Standard, it found the most success in Angel Tribal. It's also gained points in Pioneer, and decks like Collected Company and White Weenie, as well as that format's version of Angel Tribal. Those decks recently got an additional boost thanks to the printing of Giada. So it seems like the Angel may be well positioned to gain more points in that format going forward. At number 7, it is Mortality Spear. and has the same total score as Resplendent Angel, but more first-tier top 8s, so I gave it the higher spot on the list. Mortality Spear is a pretty powerful removal spell. Its worst case scenario is that it costs 4 mana to destroy any non-land permanent, which is pretty solid. But if you've gained life during your turn, you only have to pay 2 mana for the effect. It's gained all of its points so far in Historic and in Golgari Sacrifice decks in particular. These decks run a lot of ways to gain life, like Food Tokens and Cauldron Familiar. This means the Spear very frequently is a 2 mana spell in the deck, which is pretty sweet. 
It has a reasonable shot at gaining more points in Historic, and it's also still in Standard, so it could move up this list. At number six, it is the Book of Exalted Deeds. If you've gained three or more life during your turn, this powerful legendary artifact gives you a 3-3 flying angel during your instep. It can also be exiled to make an angel gain the Platinum Angel ability, that is, that you can't lose and your opponent can't win. Most of the card's value definitely comes from cranking out the angel tokens in the first place, though. It saw a little bit of play in Standard, where it was played in Mono White Control Decks as a win condition. I should note that the book was famously banned in the Arena Standard 2022 format, where people were combining it with Faceless Haven to great effect. You could put the counter on the Haven, and it would be very hard for your opponent to find a way out of an unwinnable situation. There weren't any good ways to deal with the Haven in that particular format. On top of that, in a mirror match, there were significant problems if both players had a creature with the counter on it. Once rotation happened, it was no longer quite as powerful, as evidenced by only limited success and standard in the end. But the rest of its points have come in Pioneer, where it's appeared in decks like Selesnia Angels, White Weenie, and Devotion to White. All of these decks have enough ways to gain life that the book is a pretty sweet angel factory. It's likely to keep gaining points going forward. At number five, it is Righteous Valkyrie, another life-gaining angel. This one is even an angel and cleric payoff, since you can gain life equal to the toughness of creatures with one of those types when they enter the battlefield. Then the big payoff effect here is that your whole board gets plus two plus two if you have seven life more than your starting life total, and that is a powerful payoff. And of course, it helps you get there with its ability. As you probably suspected, the Valkyrie has helped to power Angel Tribal decks we've mentioned in both Standard and Pioneer. Like the other cards we've seen from that deck, the recent arrival of Giada probably bodes well for their continued success. At number four, it is Heliod, Sun Crowned. This god loves life gain. Anytime you gain life, you get to put a plus and plus one counter on one of your creatures. And he comes with the ability to give life link to creatures, so he doesn't even need any additional help to make that happen. Like all Theros gods, he turns into a huge, indestructible creature when your devotion gets high enough too, so he can make use of those counters. Heliod didn't gain any points in Standard, but he has enabled some pretty awesome combos in both Pioneer and Modern. In Pioneer, you could combine it with Walking Ballista for an instant win combo. If you gave the Ballista lifelink and then started removing counters to damage things, it would gain back a counter every time you did that because you gained life and that triggered Heliod, and then you could just do that as many times as you wanted. This combo was not allowed to exist for very long in Pioneer, and the Ballista was quickly banned out of the format. In Modern, the Ballista is also used alongside Heliod, but it can also combine with Spike Feeder for a similar effect. With the feeder, you can remove a plus and plus one counter to gain life. So if you have Heliod in play with the feeder, you can use the feeder to gain two life, which triggers Heliod, which lets you put another counter on the feeder, and you can gain as much life as you want. The modern version of the deck is still finding success in modern right now, so Heliod is likely to keep gaining points going forward. At number three, it is Archangel of Thune, another creature who gives you counters when you gain life. The angel is a five mana three fourth flying in life link and puts a plus one plus one counter on every one of your creatures when you gain life. In standard, the angel was played both as a win condition in control decks and as a top curve creature in aggro decks. Before Heliod, the sun crowned ever existed, the Archangel was the more typical combo piece used in modern decks alongside Spike Feeder. Sadly, it's largely been pushed out of modern by Heliod, because you can get Heliod down two full turns earlier, meaning you can also combo off more quickly. Sometimes the two are played together, but since Heliod has arrived, the Archangel has really been sidelined, and it seems inevitable that Heliod will pass her in the near future. At number two, it is Silver Smote Ghoul. A 3-mana three 3-1 three is not the most impressive thing in the world, but what if I told you you could return it to the battlefield for free? Well, then we're talking, right? And in this case, all you need to do is gain three or more life during your turn. It's also nice that it can sacrifice itself to draw you a card, since that can give you more value than a 3-1 can sometimes. The Ghoul never gained any points in Standard or Historic, but in formats with powerful graveyard decks, it has quickly become a fairly important combo piece alongside Crippling Chill. In Pioneer, it's appeared in Landless Spy decks, which look to resolve something like Balustrade Spy, which will mill your entire library, since you don't have any cards in your deck that it sees as lands. This is achieved by running the modal Double Face lands from Zendikar Rising. This means all of your Crippling Chills trigger, which gains you three or more life, which will then return all of your Silver Smoke Ghouls, which also means that you get all of your prized amalgams back too. 
Obviously, that's more than enough to do lethal to your opponent. However, the deck proved to be too powerful, and Balustrade Spy and the similar Undercity Informer were both banned out of the format in 2021. However, the Ghoul is still doing some serious work in modern and vintage dredge decks, both of which also make use of Crippling Chill. Because it's played in those formats, it has a very real chance to eventually reach the number one slot on this list. Though, it does have some significant work to do to catch the number one card, which is... Blood Baron of Viscopa. The Baron comes with lifelink and protection from both white and black, and if your life total gets above 30, and your opponent gets to 10 or less, he becomes a 10-10 with flying, which automatically will be enough for lethal. Like a lot of the life gain payoffs on this list, he can obviously power himself thanks to coming with lifelink. Obviously, if he ever takes to the sky, the game is going to be over in a hurry, and because of his protection, he's difficult to remove and difficult to block, even before he becomes massive. He was played as a win condition and control decks in both block and standard, and then he went idle for a pretty long time, until Niv-Mizzet Reborn decks became a thing in Pioneer. That's a deck that's all about playing two colored cards that Niv-Mizzet can draw you, and the Blood Baron is a great thing to draw with Niv-Mizzet. He's also found some success in Vampire Tribal decks in the format. He's likely to keep gaining points, but it will be interesting to see if it can continue to outpace Silver Smoke Ghoul, which is only 12 points behind right now. So, those are the 10 cards with life gain payoffs that have been the most successful at Magic's highest level of competition. If you're interested in getting bonuses for gaining life, check out the description, where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in this video. If you want to make sure you stay aware of future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, including the last two, which also looked at life gain related topics, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can do that by becoming a patron, by becoming a channel member, or by buying some Nitsahone merch. You can find ways to do all of those things in the description. Thanks for watching.